So while the little babies are eating, I stand out here with a rake and shoo away any big girls that try to eat their food. That's how you know you become a crazy chicken lady. Hey guys, so we have been getting a lot of questions on the chicken coop that we use. And um, long story short, we've kind of been avoiding this video because we really aren't huge fans of the chicken coop we built. We don't necessarily recommend a lot of the things that we did. One of the things we did when we built our coop was we used all repurposed materials pretty much from leftover house projects. So the nice thing about our coop was that it was really cheap. That's one of the few things that we like about it. So I figured what I'd do instead is take you guys through and show you kind of all the things that we don't like and the changes we're gonna be making to the coop remodel this year and then what we will probably be doing at the end of this year or maybe most likely early next year is just building a whole new coop. So you guys asked for it and here we go. Okay, so starting out, I think I'm actually gonna just walk you guys through a little bit of the area we have around their coop. So right here we have sort of an outdoor pen. Back there is their actual run. We do like them to have as much space as possible and right now we're trying to grow a lot of our garden. So we did fence them off for right now. I'm gonna take you guys right to the coop right now and I'll show you more of their outdoor setup in a little bit. Here is the actual chicken coop. What we did was pretty much the only thing we bought for the project was this tin roof. Everything else we used was leftover scraps from uh, the fence that we put in our backyard. So it was definitely very cheap in materials. The problem is that there's a lot of gaps in it. So if you guys aren't already following us, um, I should let you know that we are in Wisconsin. So during the winter, it gets very, very cold. The chickens do fine without any supplementary heat, but what I do do, especially since there's cracks in the whole coop, is I just wrap it in plastic. And there is still air ventilation around the top of the coop. You don't want it to be completely sealed, but that at least gets rid of any drafts in the area that they hang out. So you can kind of see, I haven't gotten rid of the plastic that I put on the inside of this door yet. Um, but during the winter, the whole coop is wrapped in plastic, kind of like this. Rip tie. Hi tie. Because the wood warps, so these don't align perfectly well, and it's kind of a pain to open and close. It's not that bad right now, but it can get really misaligned. Oh, look who it is. It's our friend Rip tie. So basically, when they're out in their outdoor pen like this, I like to prop up this shovel right about here so that when the wind is blowing, it doesn't close the door. I think in the next coop, we're gonna have something um, that's a little nicer that we can put a latch down or a little stopper so that we don't have a shovel hanging out by the front of the coop all the time. Just on the outside, basically we've got this big door that Ian sort of rigged together and that's Lucy, she's very loud. Um, and then here I have just a really simple little slider that opens up on the side. This is just plywood and then we just left an opening there um, and basically that's where they hop out and they can go in their run if we're not home or if we're on vacation. So this piece of wood is actually pretty important. So we use the deep litter method. So basically the litter, we only clean the litter. Oh, see. She is so bad I'm in here right now. So we only clean the litter once a year. So it doesn't smell at all and I'm a huge advocate of the deep litter method. Okay, you know what? I am gonna do this instead because Miss Frizzle is like so not excited about me being in there right now. So the nice thing about the deep litter method is that you actually only clean it like twice a year. And the other thing is that it doesn't smell at all. So I've been to a lot of friends' houses with chicken coops and growing up, I would see friends with chickens and they always smelled so, so bad. So the deep litter method, my parents have confirmed when they come over, it doesn't smell. Um, and the key is that you start with a really thick layer of bedding, like three to four inches, I think. And then as you start to smell things, basically what you do is pile more shavings on top. So you end up with a really thick layer of bedding anywhere between usually like nine and 12 inches for us. And I usually clean that out right before the winter hits and then again after the winter is over. I won't go into it too much, but before the winter comes, you don't wanna clean it out completely because it can actually be a source of heat for the chickens. But basically that deep litter method is a huge lifesaver. It's something that I want to add into the next coop is to build it more specifically with at least four inches um, up to maybe 10 to 12 inches of space where there's no food, there's no water on the bottom. The chickens are just gonna walk on that area and it's gonna build up over time. When we first built the coop, we didn't factor in that um, deep of bedding, so I added this. And after the winter, this bedding is actually up to here and even a little bit over it. You can see that on top is the less composted material. Um, and then actually, if you dig down, it should be broken down a little bit more. Let's see what we have. 
yeah, it starts to break down a little bit more. Again, you can't really see that well because I just cleaned this out um, literally like a week ago or two and it takes a long time to break down. This is our problem child right now. She is creating so much noise. Actually, one thing I'll say while we're up here is that because when it was drafty, we tried using the spray foam and as it turns out, chickens love to eat it. Like they ate so much of it and they never got sick, but I know it wasn't good for them. So in the future, um, we're definitely not gonna do spray foam. We are just gonna wrap it in plastic. Okay, so when you go in the coop, basically to the right is where the nest box is. One thing we're gonna do this summer is we're gonna add more nest boxes to the front because this really isn't enough for everybody. They get in fights over it. And Pickles very recently has been getting picked on by the big girls. They've been outside like all the time. So I know they're not overcrowded. I think they're just picking on her a little bit. So we're gonna have to take care of her um, head. What are you guys doing? I actually do kind of like the height of the nest box. I think that's one thing we got right. Sorry, my neighbor is a little chainsaw happy right now. So the height's good because they do get to get away from the girls walking on the ground, but I do want to add more to the front. So here, probably bring it out on this side and then they'll be able to access it uh, from the inside. Okay, so the next thing I will show you guys is the roosts. So we used to have the roosts about at the nest height, uh, nest box height, and that was a horrible idea because they would sleep in the nest box and get it all poopy. So instead, we raised up the roosts so they're a little bit higher. Raise the roost, get it? Oh my gosh. And now they're much happier. And now they actually don't sleep in the nest box. Another thing we have um, is air vents, quite a bit of air vents across the top. So we do have this big vent on one side and then it goes clear to the other side where it's actually much more open. I will probably open up this side to be that much more open in the summer too to keep them cooler. That gets a nice cross breeze going and then you can see they also do have airflow. Um, the roof doesn't seal with the actual coop so you're not gonna have moisture build up in there. Definitely want to keep that airflow. And it comes across to the other side too. Oh, I'm getting covered in spiders. But this is open as well. So air flows all across the top here. And that does stay open in the winter as well. We actually used to have their water hanging in the middle and I am so much happier with it out. I'll more on that in a second. Right now we just sort of have their food in this back corner, um, which is so stupid. And I'm gonna hop out of the coop to tell you guys this, but basically the main improvements are that we are going to bring their food and water sources outside of the coop and then have just spots where they can eat and drink from them on the inside. So I would say like 85, 90% of the problems that I encounter with the chicken coop and with keeping them clean and healthy is that food and water is not your friend. So obviously we have that airflow to reduce moisture across the top of the coop, but if they have a chance to spill their water or just spill their food, they're gonna do it. They're gonna make a mess wherever they possibly can. So what we've decided to do this summer is we're gonna create two systems for feeding and watering them. And basically they're gonna come from the outside of the coop there where the food is gonna be stored on the outside, the water is gonna be stored on the outside, but it's gonna filter in into the coop where basically they'll have a feeder and a water where they can eat and drink from, but they're not able to make messes of it. It's gonna be a little more complicated. So that is definitely Ian's project. But if you guys want to see how we're gonna go about it and what the plans are, definitely subscribe to the channel because we're gonna keep you guys posted on that project. So like I said, um, I wanna add another couple nest boxes right here and then I think we're gonna have their food maybe in one tube coming down in one pipe about here and then the water, maybe two waters coming down here. We could also go in that corner as well. Okay, so obviously this is their run door. Again, this is just that piece uh, that opens and closes by sliding. I'm just going to prop this open to give them a little more airflow because Pickles was panting in there. Okay, so once they come out their janky little ramp here, like I said, we are not proud of this coop at all. Um, then we are in the run, so there's a big door in this side. Right now I do have one waterer in their run. Okay, so when I was planning the next coop, let me back away slowly. Okay, so when I was planning the next coop, I thought that I was gonna want one that was tall enough to stand up in, but I actually decided against that for this reason that I'm about to show you. So these girls absolutely love their dry area underneath the coop. It never gets wet. 
This area always stays completely dry down there, so I don't even really have to give them a sand bath because it never gets any moisture down there, and I have never had it to start to smell. All right, Miss Frizzle is putting up such a stink about me being here that I'm gonna bring her right next to me. Miss Frizzle is one of our black copper morans. We did write a blog post on those black copper morans and how old they were when they started laying and stuff. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll link it below. So the bottom of the run, I have actually never cleaned. Basically, how the run cleaning works for me, we try and do just the deep litter system, but outside. Side. I have never noticed the covered area starting to smell. I have noticed the area that gets rained on get smelly if it is wet for a really, really long time. And if that happens, I just throw wood chips in there or uh, dead leaves or some other kind of brown matter. And as long as there's enough of it, that smell just goes away for us. But we're definitely not professional farmers or anything. So if you're interested in deep litter or if you're interested in composting, I would definitely take advice from people who know what they're talking about. Nice. Okay, sorry, I had to change the battery. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more of the outside of the coop itself. So basically we have this fenced in pen area and that is to mostly protect our gardens right now which are growing, they kinda, our lot is kinda L-shaped if you're new, but um, so it goes all, all along down there. So I would like to eventually allow them out to free range again. They can't right now because our grass is growing back because the dogs and chickens kinda destroyed it. But since it's getting there, I wanna be able to let them out. So we do have all of our garden beds are fenced off and I'm gonna do um, a little garden tour in the next couple days too. If you guys want to subscribe, I'll show you guys what we're growing this year. So we have kind of these double layers of protection. Um, these are just onions and potatoes starting to come up over here a little bit. But this run is basically what they stay in as long as we're home. I don't really like for them to not be covered because if we're home, the dogs can be out here with them and they've chased away a hawk at least once that we know of. So we've never had a hawk attack or a predator attack that they've been out, so we do like to keep them out as much as possible. But for when we're gone, when we're both at work, or if we're on vacation, we do have this covered run that we can put them in, and this part just opens and closes. Like I said, we're not proud of it. It's all kind of janky and thrown together quickly. Yes, you're such a good protector. Freya, we know you can clear it, hun. Wanna hop? Hop, let's go. See, that's how she does it. Hop, come on, let's go. She has to get in only in that one spot, which means she has to eat the potatoes or step on the onions and the potatoes, which drives me absolutely crazy. Usually this side is shaded, so that's nice, but um, I actually put these pallets out here in the middle because I thought that they would like to perch on it, but they don't at all, so now we just have them sitting on the side. And this is just the carrier that I put the babies in when it's time to go inside. I wanna say they're like eight, nine weeks old now. Um, and it's still getting in the low 30s at night, so I do keep them nice and warm. So basically our plan for this summer is to get that food and water system in so that they're not spilling water and making a mess of food anymore. So that should be out of the corner. They should have plenty of room in there. We might put up another perch or two. So basically our goal with the coop is to have enough space inside and enough space outside that we can leave on vacation and they will have enough food and water and enough space for a week maybe without needing anybody to come feed or water them. Because I am a hover chicken mama, I definitely will hire someone to check on them at least a couple days a week. But right now when we leave, my main concern is just them spilling all their water and not having any water. So when we have that water blocked off and they only have a little area where they can take a drink and we have their food blocked off so they can't knock it over, I'm gonna feel a lot better about the coop. So like I said, it's not the prettiest and it's definitely not the most efficient right now. Can't help with the prettiness until we redo it, but we are gonna make it more efficient this summer. So hope that helps you guys. So if you guys want, you can hit subscribe. Um, watch as we remodel that chicken coop. Can't believe I'm saying that. But otherwise, let me know any questions or comments you have below. I would love to hear from you guys what your chicken coop setups are like. If you have any systems that you really like that you use, definitely let us know. Just let me know about your flock too, what kind of chickens you guys have. Um, I'm super curious to hear about that as well.